welcome to this, my latest project, which I am calling A River. Yes. It's been a while since my last video because it's been freaking cold out in my shed, which means that it's not so enjoyable to work and the glue doesn't dry very quickly either. But anyway, on with it. Uh, as usual, I'm starting with polystyrene board. I've got extruded, which is the blue stuff here, and expanded, um, which is cheaper and comes in thicker bits. I usually use Gorilla Glue, uh, and this occasion I used Mod Podge. Um, I don't know why, I just fancied it, I guess. Um, I think the Gorilla Glue is starting to become a little bit harder to press out of the tube at the moment. Anyway, once I've cut my basic river shape with a hot wire foam factory sculpting tool. I use sculptor mould to go over the entire uh, base of the model, building up the landform. And I apply it fairly thickly, um, as in the consistency is quite thick, not very runny or sloppy. Um, so it dries quicker. You've got, I don't know, probably about 20 minutes before this starts really going off. Um, the wetter you make it, the longer it takes. And when it's really wet, it will take your entire lifetime, possibly, to dry. But it's very good stuff for building up landforms. Usually I'd use a bit of uh, masking uh, tape over paper underneath there as well, but I didn't on this one. I think I may have forgotten. Um, anyway, I'm going over the riverbed there with some straight plaster of Paris. That just smooths the river base out. It also thickens up the leg because I'm going to be adding some epoxy over that and I didn't want it to be too hot and melt the foam. Uh, wooden and Cynics rock moulds as usual with the same plaster of Paris in them. Doesn't matter if they break when they come out, doesn't matter if they're not perfect because you're going to be snapping them anyway, making up this jigsaw along the river bank there. Just trial and error really. And I stick them on with more sculpt mould which is the easiest way to do it. You could use uh, plaster as well, plaster of Paris, a, a kind of a thick mix of that. I have done that in the past. On this occasion I used sculpt mold because I wanted to go over the tops of it anyway and kind of blend them into the bank so there was no point in not using sculpt mold. And I went over the hill to make sure that it was a smooth kind of gradient rather than a kind of lumpy look on, you see on bad terrain where it's clearly just two pieces of foam stuck together. Vallejo European Thick Mud, which is an acrylic um, with a kind of bits of twig and um, all sorts of things in it. Um, when it goes off, it looks like thick mud from Europe, believe it or not. It's very good stuff, but I used it this time as the undercoat, and then I applied soil and grout over the top of that. I wanted a bit more structure, I guess, a bit more kind of thick, muddy surface. I don't know if it really showed in the final thing, but I was experimenting and I, I seal all of the grout and soil in with um, isopropyl alcohol uh, followed by scenic glue. Um, and then some acrylic paint washes for the rocks. And these are my usual uh, raw umber, burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber, I say my usual and I've forgotten what they are. Um, and then a, a black overwash um, after the uh, first two or three layers have dried. Um, and then I start painting the river base and I've just made up a bluey kind of colour here mixing a bit of dark blue and a bit of uh, kind of forest green and then I'm just highlighting edges with a few lighter colours there really um, kind of making a turquoisey marine kind of colour to symbolise uh, symbolise no um, kind of offer the impression of depth in the river. That's what I was after. And I just kept going with that until I was happy, basically, with the colour of the river. Now it's time for static grass, which is one of my favourite bits. I use Knock Static Grass and a Pico Micro Applicator for this, and I cover up the river, which had dried by that point. Mod Podge Mat I use for the basing glue. Um, I use it uh, straight from the pot. And I apply it kind of randomly, uh, so it creates kind of semi-tufts. Um, so it's not basically a carpet of of, uh, of grass, which would look terribly uneven. So I'm just using the uh, wild grass six millimeter uh, stuff from Knock here. Uh, 
give it a bit of a shake, collect up all the nice static grass for use later. And then I go over the edges of the static grass, blending them in with a bit of um, two millimeter Pico static grass. I think this is a autumn mix, which is a bit darker and it, it makes it look a bit kind of like shadows, a bit of, adds a bit of depth to the grass again. And now Gage Master 12 millimeter grass mat. Um, I could use 12 millimeter static grass, um, but this stands up better, you know, because um, they use very powerful machines to make these mats. I wish I had done this before I'd applied the 6mm because then it would have blended in easier. As it happens, I cut up bits of it, stuck it on, and then I had to go over the edge with a bit of spray adhesive there. Um, and then 4mm um, static grass just to kind of blend it in so that the edges didn't look rough. Um, a Woodland Scenics Fine Turf, which is uh, wonderful stuff that, again, uh, blends in the edges. Um, and then some coarse turf by Woodland Scenics, which um, I use for the bushes and shrub and scrub, etc. Um, and then I seal that all in, again, a spray of isopropyl alcohol and then scenic glue. Uh, the scenic glue is three parts um, matte medium, one part water and a few drops of rinse aid. Um, now I'm using weathering powders to create kind of a mossy look on the rocks. Um, these are very strong so you want to go easy on them, just you know, use a touch, of, a small touch. Um, you can see I, I, I started adding it a bit more thickly there. Uh, scenic fibres uh, uh, by Deluxe, uh, these are I'm using to build up body on this little bit of weir here, um, the, these rapids. I attach them with Mod Podge Gloss um, and um, they look quite nice as they are there actually, they, they give a good sense of flow. Most of them will be covered up and the idea really was, I mean I don't know really why I put them on the river there. I think I had the idea that they would show a bit more through the resin. Oh, there's me just making a dam um, out of masking tape and um, wood glue. Uh, and now I'm using some um, epoxy, two-part epoxy. This is by CFS, which is in the UK. That was a nice wonky shot there, wasn't it? Um, and this is two equal parts, which you mix together for a few minutes. I actually got a few more bubbles than I'd like in this, um, so it was much harder to burst them. Um, well, yeah, once this, I apply the tint, which is acrylic inks, and I use a very small amount and it goes a very long way. A touch of blue and a touch of black there, actually. Gives it a kind of a slaty grey tint. It looks very th a thick, but as you see, it goes on and it's much more transparent. But not transparent enough so that it really shows the fibres. So I was experimenting with these fibres, seeing how they would do, and actually, I, the, my main thought was that they would add body. And as I kept building it up, I thought, right, you know, that they'll show through more and more as the tints get lighter. And, um, you know, they'll add a kind of a frothy look under the surface. So I'm adding more scenic fibres there. It's basically very straight polyfiber, um, I think. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm adding some more uh, epoxy there. And that has just been tinted with a touch of blue and a touch of green. Um, you can see all those bubbles in there, which um, they do. Most of them do pop, um, but you just breathe over them, and they uh, they, they they pop as well with the um, carbon dioxide in your breath. You could use a flame. I'll probably use a flame next time, or, or a vibrating table, or whatever. Um, yet more fibres, um, because I'm just building it up and building it up, and I'm soaking in the edges there, just as, giving that uh, sense of the, the, the water rushing under the under the surface under the, the undercurrent and then the final layer of there's me breathing over it there to get rid of the bubbles final layer of resin mod podge gloss which is the kind of go-to product for making uh, ripples and i applied it quite thickly near the weir there um, and i use an air can to blow it around and create um, uh, realistic ripples that doesn't really show it that shot but it creates very realistic ripples and there we can see what it actually looked like after the Mod Podge had dried and this was one of my most popular posts on Instagram um, uh, and I was very happy with the way that actually turned out and you can see there the effect the fibres have had under that, 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 that uh, layers of resin um, the top layers and I go over those and I highlight them to make it look like the rushing water this is just some white acrylic with a very fine brush um, 
I'm just being very careful with it. I've put some down the edges there just to, you know, to see the water looks like it's rushing along the banks. Take off the masking tape. This actually proved a bit tougher than usual models um, because I'd added so many layers and it had seeped all through it. Now I'm making some trees. I'm using hanging basket liner. I think this is made from coconut uh, bark. Anyway, um, shout out to Luke Towan, who, um, whose video I, I saw on this and I thought, ooh, that looks very, very uh, interesting. Uh, so go check out his channel, where most of you probably have already, because he's like well famous in the, <laughs> in the modelling YouTube world. Um, and he, he, I use just the skewers as the, um, uh, the, the, the trunks, because that was the scale of my piece. Um, um, you cut them up with all the bits of uh, the fibre into squares and then tease them out, make them until they're just basically happy with what you've got um, and, uh, and trim it and trim it and you can see there I have got um, a few hundred thousand trees or I don't know, 20, 15, I don't know how many it is, you count them. Um, anyway, I give them a spray with uh, brown paint and then some spray adhesive um, over that, quite a big thick layer of that, and then some Woodland Scenics coarse turf. Then some dull coat, this is by Plastic Coat. It's basically matte varnish that goes over that. Uh, just finish off with a bit of Woodland Scenics uh, burnt grass, fine turf. Mod Podge mat in the hole, and uh, which you just drill with a little pin vise and stick the trees in wherever you feel like it. I mean, you could spend ages doing it, but I'm not sure trees take ages thinking about where they're going to grow. Well, they, they spend ages growing, but I'm not sure they think too carefully about where they're going to be. And then finally, some ground up dried leaves um, from the garden just to hide the base of the trunks. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching again. I really appreciate all the comments I've been getting, all the support, all the uh, constructive feedback. Um, I'm on Instagram as well, so check me out there. It's Hi Eye Workshop. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you ever so much again. Cheers for now.